So to get started, first let me see where the mouse is on the screen. Um, just some basic tips. Um, poly count wise, I say um, try to stay under 50K per scene. Um, you can go well over that, but just to make things kind of run smoothly, that's the best thing to do. Uh, well before your poly count limit, you're gonna hit your texture limit. So try to keep everything low. I don't suggest anything over 512 unless you're going to be making something super close up or if you're only gonna have one or two things in the scene. Okay, so in Maya, I'm using this test object, this little coin. Um, it has a couple different texture maps on it. I'll explain how those get connected um, and which ones you're allowed to use. But first of all, we're going to be using the exporter that can be found on our web page. Along with the exporters, there's also a file called curl.exe. You need to make sure that it's in the location specified on that page. I believe it's uh, C Windows. Um, just drop that in there and the exporter should run from whatever program you're trying to use. Um, if you get an error, that's probably one of the main reasons why. Uh, so you have the most recent exporter. You just drag that into your window for Maya. And you get a bunch of options. You have different collisions you can add, um, collision spheres and collision boxes. Spheres can be scaled uniformly, so um, just make sure it's still a perfect sphere when you apply it. Collision boxes can be scaled as long as it, you still have right angles at each corner, uh, but they can be rotated and do not need to be axis aligned. All right. So you have this coin object, and we'll go into the hypershade. Right now, we support color channels, transparency channels, normal maps, and spec maps. Uh, if some of you aren't too familiar with normal maps, they're basically bump maps, which are height maps, but they also have another channel of information which tells the normals which way to face, so they look a little bit better in lighting and things like that. On the art page, I put a link to a normal map creation filter for Photoshop. So a lot of times you can just put the color channel in there, run that filter, and it gives you something pretty close. It might not be perfect, but it'll look better than just a flat object. Um, same thing goes for spec maps. Um, you can usually generate those in Photoshop by just making it black and white and kind of playing with the different um, degrees of specularity you want on that part of the object. And to save some texture space, spec maps can be really small. They can be like 64 by 64 and they still look good because the information is so simple. So um, in Maya, it's basically as simple as taking the file you have imported, dragging it onto your hypershade object, um, specifying what you want it to be. Normal maps are a little bit more complicated because it's not a default channel for the object. So you drag it on, uh, you go down to other, and you're gonna get input and output channels. You're gonna wanna look for out color, and then in out color, you should have normal camera. Click on that, it's connected that way. Um, you can just close that, it's automatically applied. And so you'll see you'll have these on the object. Um, if you want to see the normal maps appear dynamically in Maya, you're going to have a different type of shading. You go to shading, make sure high quality rendering is checked off. Uh, when that's the case, you'll see what you'll see in the game pretty much. Um, I don't have a spec map on this. I have the default one. Uh, when you import things with the spec map, it's usually the highest setting in Wild Pocket. So you usually want to change that. And that's pretty easy to do. What I do is I have a couple different files just called like low spec, medium spec, and high spec. Um, and again, those are just degrees of gray. They can be really small. They can be four by four. I make them a little bit bigger just so I can see the thumbnail better. Um, so I'm going to load this texture. So um, just spec medium. And again, it's just a general color. You'll see there it's just like this sort of in-between gray color. And again, you can define individual pieces this way. Uh, and I'm going to set that as a spec color. Usually choose to make your objects fongs because they have enough information that you can um, sort of apply the stuff we support, but not so much that it gets overly complicated. All right, so we have this object. Let me straighten it out so I can show you how collision works. All right, so uh, this is a pretty simple object. So I'm going to give it some simple collision. It's not going to react perfectly in the engine for now. But for simple collision, if you don't want to spend the time, um, you just put a box around it. In the hypergraph, if you're familiar with that, it will appear under a group called collision. Uh, so
So once you generate them, make sure they appear in here. If they aren't, drag them in there just to keep them organized. So there we go. Um, from here, you can give it some class names, which as an artist you won't have to use really too much. Um, center of mass um, usually appears right in the center. I think for now, center of mass is always at the origin. I don't think it's too editable at this point. Um, you can set the mass. Um, and you can add and edit keywords. I'm not sure if you guys want to use this too much since you're going to be working with each other in the same room, but um, for this you can use this for searchable keywords. If I want to add the keyword coin, cylinder, um, money, uh, if people search for this in the library, they'll get this object. Okay, um, so I want to export this scene to the library. The first time you do this is going to ask you for your user account and password. Uh, I'm going to put my username. Okay, now it's going to ask for my password. I'm going to unplug the monitor because Maya does not support um, hidden passwords, and I'm sure I don't want people going into our uh, main accounts. <laughs> All right, there we go. We're back in business. Uh, and then the name for the object in the library. Um, let's just name this test coin. Okay, and this is going to take a little bit. The Maya exporter is a little bit slower uh, because we're going through Mel scripts and um, they're not as quickly as you can code them for 3D Studio Max at this point. All right, so we have the object to the server. Um, usually if there's an error, it'll tell you. If not, there you go. 